A lot of the information that informs me of how to make decisions and what I focus my activities on when creating businesses and earning money and doing marketing comes from books. Again, I rely on really smart people uh, and a lot of really smart people have put their information in written form in books. YouTube is very new, video content is very new, audio content is very new, yet there have been smart, intelligent, wise people for thousands of years and I read a lot of books and this is one of my favorite books, The Haga Kure, which, is, which goes back hundreds of years and it covers actually hundreds of years of samurai and shogun wisdom from the people who ruled Japan and the warriors of Japan that really ruled society. There's a lot of great information in this book and this was recently translated into English and I'm gonna go over a few quotes. It's a collection of short stories, but I'm gonna go over a few quotes from this book to give you a little sampling of this so that you can also, you know, I can impart this, this wisdom to you. So this is a different video from what you may be used to and if you don't like this, just feel free to move on to the next video, but maybe you'll get something. Now here's the first quote from this book. If you vigilantly examine your own heart, it will become clear how many bad thoughts are invoked in your mind each day. You should never be contented with yourself. But even so, the way a samurai should approach life is different again. If you don't believe, rather audaciously, that you are the singularly most gallant warrior in Japan, it will be difficult to exhibit true valor. The extent of one's courage is evident in one's confident attitude. Now what this quote means to me is that we're all gonna have negative thoughts. It's gonna happen. You can't just wish them all away, but you should cast them off fast. And regardless of that though, it's you always have to have that confidence in yourself. The negative thoughts are gonna come. Again, the way I describe it is bubbles popping up in your mind, just and pop them, let them go. You know, a lot of my students in my training programs, they'll start and then they'll doubt themselves and they'll quit, you know, and they'll say, ah, oh, you know, e-commerce is a scam, internet marketing is a scam, stock trade, you know, they'll just say all these businesses are scams and they run away. But those thoughts are normal when you're starting a business, that it's not gonna work out. You just kinda gotta cast them away, not, not dwell on them. If you are prepared to get wet from the start, the result is still the same, but it is no hardship. This attitude can be applied to all things. And how I would apply this to business, you know, getting wet, right? It's, it's gonna get hard. When you start a business, you're gonna lose money. You're gonna, you're gonna have obstacles. And a lot of folks go into business, uh, and you know, as a teacher, you know, a lot of folks come into my training programs. What they think from the start is they're gonna come in, they're gonna buy my training program, and the next day they're gonna be making passive, recurring income. They're gonna be making tons of money without any work. There's gonna be no struggle, no obstacle, no mental distress, and they're just gonna quit their job and they're gonna be home free and be making tons of money. And then they just get to fish all day or something, spend time with their family and fish and watch TV. Right, that's not the case. You're gonna get wet. You know, there's gonna be obstacles. But if you have that expectation from the start that when you start on this journey of entrepreneurship or online business, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be a lot easier and it's not gonna be as distressful. This one's cool. A calculating man is a coward. He is afraid of death, which is why he is a disgrace. Moreover, erudite men conceal their cowardice and avarice through their wit and glibness. Their cloak of deception tricks others into overestimating them. What this quote means to me is that always being a calculating man, always thinking, right? And I'd, I'd say I get stuck in this sometimes personally is that I'm always thinking of all the angles, trying to calculate things, trying to figure out the best way to do things, trying to figure out the best, you know, I, I get these questions um, from my students, the best traffic source, what is, you know, what is the best product to market on Facebook? What is the best affiliate network to join? What is the best, you know, people are cowards, really. That's, that's what that question says. It says they're scared. 
And I'm guilty of the same thing, over-calculating, rather than just being a man of action. You know, and what I suggest folks do is take crazy action. You're not always, you know, calculating is fear-based, whereas action doesn't always work out. But in reality, it has a better chance of working out than trying to calculate all the angles on things. Pick something and stick with it. Be fearless. It's scary sometimes to say, I'm gonna start an e-commerce store. I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. What cowards do is they, they do two videos on YouTube, they don't get any, they only get a couple views and they say, I'm gonna try something else, YouTube's dead. Right, or the cowards will do one advertising, you know, one, one, uh, advertise one product as an affiliate and then move on to something else. They're calculating, they're calculating, rather than going all in and charging into battle. So what it tells me is just action. Just take almost blind action, but move with confidence. Okay, this is from passage 147 of book one. A warrior who reflects on his faults and spends his life training with all of his might will become a treasure to the clan. Now, what this quote means to me is that, again, we're gonna have faults. And even though this book is saying blindly, almost blindly follow a path, self-reflection is important. Self-awareness of where you're not good is important. Maybe you suck with technology, but you're great at marketing, right? You probably need a technical business partner. Maybe you want to start an e-commerce company and you want to negotiate certain product prices in China. Maybe you need a business partner. Maybe you need to build a team around you. Maybe you need to learn something. But being self-aware is important. Here's passage 149 from book number one in the Hagakure. Be sure to engage with someone fully as you converse. Regardless of how inspiring your comments may be, they will be ineffectual if the person is not following you. Now what this quote means to me is, listen well, okay, two ears, one mouth. All of us have been in a sort of conversation where maybe you're saying something and another person tries to interject their thoughts, or you try to interject your comments into their conversation. These are useless because nobody's listening, right? You're both trying to talk and the other person is in the middle of talking to you about something. Your comments aren't, they're just ineffective. Even though you're getting it out, the only person you're doing it for is yourself. Nobody's actually really listening to you and you're not listening to them either, most likely. You see this a lot nowadays with people on their phones. You know, people are having dinner, one person might be talking and the other person's sitting on their phone. And if they wanna sit there on their phone, let them. I don't talk to people when they're looking on their phones. First off, I think it's rude, and second off, they're just, you know, it makes sense. They're just not listening. So this is passage 162 from book one in the Hagakure. What's more, if you are killed in the fray, be sure that your corpse falls in the direction of the enemy. What this tells me is that if you are going into battle, you wanna die forward. You don't want to die on your heels. When you're becoming an entrepreneur, you need to go all in, okay? Just like going into battle. I think people are so weak these days, personally. People are always calculating, hedging, creating their second backup options, third backup options. Their corpse, most warriors today, if you put most people in society into battle, they'd probably fall, they'd probably just run away right? Samurais made sure that if they were fighting, they were moving forward. So when you're running your business, let's say you need a little extra money in order to sustain your business, or let's say you need to, you know, give away a little more equity than you're comfortable with to a partner to help you grow your business. Or you could keep it all to yourself and keep all the equity or not take loans or whatever. What this tells me is fall forward. Don't just quit, die moving forward. Passage 163 from book one of the Hagakure. Always act politely and with an air of humility for the good of others. This is the same for married couples as well. If you remain as thoughtful as when you met for the first time, there will be no reason to quarrel. Samurai wisdom, right? Who knew that samurais had relationship wisdom? I like this a lot. Um, 
I'm not gonna go too deep into my personal life, but you know, I've been in relationships, deep relationships where the way we treated each other years in was not the same as the way we treated each other when we first met. And this caused a massive irreconcilable problem. Very sad. Passage 173. Read books from your gut. Your voice will falter if you only read from your mouth. So when I'm reading from my mouth, I'm reading like this. When I'm reading from my gut, I'm reading like this. When you talk from your gut, which is lower down, you're talking from your gut, it feels like you're talking down here. When you're talking from your mouth, it's you're talking from your throat. When you speak from your gut, it makes you more come across more confident. This is a very big trick within marketing and public speaking. As you see, I'm speaking from my mouth now, and now I'm reading from my gut, or I'm talking from my gut. Deeper voices create more of an attraction within people. They create an air of confidence, and they create more likability. Random, but it, it's true, and it works. Passage 174. Those who revel when times are good will wither in adversity. This was true for me, actually. I made millions of dollars one year, and I proceeded to spend it all. And the next year, I lost a million dollars. This, ha this happened back in 2014. And I had to, I was in debt for a short period of time to the government for back payments on taxes that I wasn't able to pay. Because once again, I freely spent, I was making millions a year, I was in my 20s, and I would spend tens of thousands of dollars a night in uh, clubs and I would spend tens of thousands of dollars a flight flying first class. All the money I was earning, I was spending on needless transient things. And it caused me to wither when some hard times in my business came around, which they always do. Passage 184. A man of stature should speak with brevity. When Nabashima Ichium visited Master Nichimon on a chore, the only thing that Nichimon uttered was, Pass on my regards to Tango no Kami. What this says to me is just simply less is more. Speaking less words is more effective than trying to fill in all of the empty space with useless information. Passage 185. More than with wisdom and discretion, a man under 40 should attend to his duties with tenacity. This is very straightforward. If you're under 40, teens, 20s, 30s, you should be crazy about business if you're trying to make money. And just, you should be a freaking workhorse. If you're older than 40, means you should use more wisdom. If you're over 40, which I'm not, you should use your wisdom or your resources, connections, etc. You should look for more areas of leverage. This is the last passage in book one if you've made it this far and you're enjoying this video, please let me know if you'd like. Comment below and say, book two, please. Okay, book two, please. To let me know if you'd like me to go over all the quotes I have in the second part of the Hagakure, which is the Samurai Wisdom. Passage 193. Make up your mind to boldly advance without hesitation whenever your honor as a samurai is at stake. In any case, just give yourself over to insanity and sacrifice yourself to the task. Whoa, give yourself over to insanity. It's pretty gnarly. What this says to me is, if it's about your family, if it's about your reputation, defend that. Because our name, our personhood, is really all we have. I actually feel good about this one. I've had a few people, you know, say, oh, John's a, John's a scam, right? He has a training program, you know? Uh, you know, he teaches people stuff, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I offered to debate them, right? And I've had a couple debates with a few YouTubers who spoke about me, but didn't know what they were talking about. I feel good about those. I like that. Give yourself over to insanity to defend your honor. It's pretty gnarly. I hope you enjoyed uh, my reading of this book. I'm a big reader like leveraging the knowledge of others. And if you enjoyed this video, 
leave a like. I don't expect this to get a lot of views, so if you're one of the special few who made it here, congrats. Um, and let me know. Book two, please. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. I won't be doing these videos too often, but I hope you enjoyed it because I love this stuff. Have a good one. Bye. Ciao.